Every farmer that farms, whether no matter how they farm, is going to have a different cost of production. Uh, some like new, some like to fix use, some, you know, uh, some, some are better purchasers, some are better sellers. So there, there's always a cost of production difference. I, I would have to say uh, over the years on my operation <coughs> that uh, I think no-till farming has been a good asset to my farm financially. Uh, do I make more or less of the same than my neighbors? I don't know. Uh, I think some of my neighbors do quite well, I think. So uh, I, 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 really, I really don't know the answer to that question. Uh, is it viably possible to farm uh, no-till and cover crops and make a profit? Yes. And I, you know, so I'll pass that on to somebody else. It's what saved our farm by switching to the regenerative practices. We were ready to hang it up because we were going nowhere at the bank except backwards. And we started adapting these principles and, you know, there, like Joe said, there's all kinds of different ways you can do the math on this. But I guess I go with what my banker tells me. He deals with 47 other farmers. I'm still borrowing money. When I got done this year, he said, your operating note should be 750 dollars to $850,000. And he gave us an operating note for 350000 It's a pretty big difference. And we're putting in the same crops as our neighbors. I mean, we are putting in some different ones, but you know, we're running on 30 to, 30 to at most 50% of the nitrogen of our neighbors. We're not putting on P and K. You start taking all those things away, and, and obviously it all comes down to a very successful cover crop or a, a successful cover crop. I guess is, is the key to getting our input so low, but we, we would have been done if we wouldn't have found this way. You know, I agree with what Joe said. It doesn't matter if it's more profitable than your neighbor, less profitable. What is it doing for you and your family? And, you know, my book here, the chapter that the publisher made me leave out was a chapter I'd wrote on finances. At the end of 1998, my wife and I were 1.5 million in debt. 1998, that was a lot of money for a young family. And by 2007, I had paid off that 1.5 million using regenerative practices. My son's 34 years old and he's never borrowed a penny. Okay, and he farms with cash. How many 34 year olds can say that? Okay, and it's not that dad and mom gave him all of it. He's had to work for it. But the fact of the matter is like Dr. Jonathan Lundgren uh, in his study, regenerative farms 76% higher profitability. I think one of the reasons our consulting business has grown so fast is there's this misnomer out there that if you're gonna go down the regenerative path, you're gonna have a lull in production and it's gonna cost you more money. We're very good at increasing profitability for the vast majority of our clients the very first year. And we do that because they're simply over applying inputs. You know, they're n they don't understand how soil functions. They don't understand the nutrient cycle, the energy cycle. The other thing is we're very good at taking farmers and ranchers in their context. We're not gonna go tell you to buy a no-till drill if you're financially not capable of doing so. That'd be foolish. We're not gonna go tell all our clients to put their corn in 60 inch rows with covers. No, it's context, one step at a time. You know, watching people like Grant and Don though, the other thing we have to ask ourselves as a society is what are all those ancillary benefits worth? Clean water, clean air. And you talk about nutrient dense food and you made an excellent comment how, when are you gonna be paid for it? We're working with companies right now that we're, we're measuring the nutrient density of food being grown and raised in and on regenerative farms, comparing that to conventional farms. The differences are mind blowing. Okay, not just a little bit, they're major, major differences. 
And as more and more of these studies be done, and as they're tied to soil health, plant health, animal health, human health, like was said this morning, they, they are going to demand and um, farmers will be paid for these regenerative practices. Right now, I spend the vast majority of my time working with companies, talking to board of directors, heads of sustainability, how do we tie what those companies' needs are back to the farmer and rancher and fill that supply chain. But the number one goal of our company is how do we put more money in farmers' pockets? And they need to be paid not only for the nutrient-dense products they're producing, but also for all these other ancillary benefits. The carbon, the clean air, the clean water, you know, revitalizing rural communities. All of these things should be taken into account. I look at what society is spending now for flooding and things like that. If we just increase the infiltration and water holding capacities of, this, of our soils, we could alleviate a lot of that. And farmers need to be rewarded for that, you know, and it's coming. It's coming much faster than I thought it would three and five years ago, I'll tell you that. So that's a good thing. I'll just, I'll just add to it. Um, I didn't know Gabe at the time, but he, he kept saying he could produce a bushel of corn for, I think it was a buck 47. And I thought, there's no way you can produce a bushel of corn for $1.47. But it forced me over a period of about six, seven years to knock my production costs down over a dollar a bushel. So even if I don't have a, a value-added market to go into, I'm still way more competitive than my neighbors when we get into tough financial times in egg, which they all come and go. The other side of it that's happened to me and Dawn is we've, we've consistently for about the last two to three years have turned down more land that's been offered to us because of our farming practices and what we're doing than we currently farm. I never thought that would happen in our farming career, but absentee landowners are taking note and uh, making changes themselves also.